Welcome to sixth grade reading. This is lesson 159. We are going to be looking of America 2, pages 251 to 259. <clears throat> um, some poems and a little story. So, um, but first, just to let you know, you have a vocab quiz for list 32 tomorrow. Okay, I know I backed that up a day. It was supposed to be Monday, but we're doing it on Friday because uh, to just get everything caught up and on in line. And so then the last two weeks, we'll just be on those last two Fridays, okay? Uh, we are coming up to the very end. This is the end of the second, or this is the end of uh, April. We just have two weeks left after tomorrow. And so we're gonna be whizzing through some stuff and um, then you'll be studying and getting those final exams done. And so um, it's just coming and it's in a whirlwind. Um, and, and you may be thinking there's a lot to do and me too. So that's okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna quiz you on vocab list 32. So you can have that put away so that you can see if you know them. And I'm gonna ask you, this time I'm gonna ask you I'm going to give you the word. I'm going to ask you what the definition is, okay? So, what is the definition for novice? Novice. What is the definition for novice? Beginner. A beginner. <clears throat> Good job. Sorry. What is the definition for crier? Crier. The person who shouts out public announcements, that's a crier, not someone who cries, <laughs> okay? Um, air, E-R-E, -E, air. Before, before, okay? I may I'm gonna switch gears. Justified by selfish reasonings. What word means justify? By selfish reasonings. Rationalize, good job. Um, a person ruling in the place of a king is called what? Person ruling in the place of a king is the viceroy. Viceroy. Uh, what means touching the emotions? Touching the emotions. Poignant. Poignant. Okay. What is the definition for burnished? Burnished. Well polished is burnished. What about tantamount? What's the definition for tantamount? Equal, good job. Uh, what's the definition for mediocre? Mediocre. That's average to less than average. Average to less than average. And then the last one, dogmatic. What is the definition for dogmatic? Characterized by arrogant stubbornness. Characterized by arrogant stubbornness is dogmatic. All right, hope you did well with those. We will be <clears throat> having that quiz tomorrow. Let's take a look at what you're gonna be reading. Okay, work loyally is the first poem. The author is unknown. It means they don't know who the author was. Um, just in case you weren't sure on that. God has a job for you to do just where he has placed you. Remember that he needs you to do your best right where you are. Okay, so as you read the poem, think about that. The story Chanticleer and Partlet, Chaucer was considered to be the greatest author of medieval England. One of his most famous works were, was the Canterbury Tales from which this story was taken. Okay, so this is a very famous um, poem, or story, sorry. And then Hiawatha's Childhood is a poem, although it's a longer poem. The Song of Hiawatha is Longfellow's tribute to the American Indian. It describes Hiawatha's childhood with his grandmother, Nokomis, his many battles, and his marriage the Indian maiden, <coughs> Minnehaha. Hiawatha's Childhood is a portion of that long poem, all right? So it's even longer than what the portion is in, in your book, okay? I'll let you read the poem, Work Loyally by Yourself, but I will start the story, Chant Clear and Partlet. It's retold by Jay Berg Eason Wine. Um, 
and Marietta Stockard. Once there was a barnyard close to a wood in a little valley. Here dwelt a cock, Chanticleer by name. His comb was redder than coral. His feathers were like burnished gold, and his voice was wonderful to hear. Long before dawn, his morning, long before dawn each morning, his crowing sounded over the valley, and his seven wives listened in admiration. One night, as he sat on the perch by the side of Dame Partlet, by the side of Dame Partlet, his most loved mate, he began to make a curious noise in his throat. What is it, my dear? said Dame Partlet. You sound frightened. Oh, said Chanticleer, I had the most horrible dream. I thought that as I roamed down by the wood, a beast like a dog sprang out and seized me. His color was red, his no nose was small, and his eyes were like coals of fire. Ugh, it was fearful. Tut, tut, are you a coward to be frightened by a dream? You've been eating more than was good for you. I wish my husband to be wise and brave if he would keep my love. The impartlet clucked as she smoothed her feathers and slowly closed her scarlet eyes. She was disgusted at having her dis sleep disturbed. Of course you are right, my love, yet I have heard of many dreams which, come tr which came true. I am sure I shall meet with some misfortune, uh, but we will not talk of it now. I am quite happy to be here by your side. You are very beautiful, my dear. Dame Parlet opened one eye slowly and made a pleased sound deep in her throat. The next morning, Chanticleer flew down from the perch and called his hens about him for their breakfast. He walked about boldly, calling chuck chuck at each grain of corn which he fell found. He felt very proud as they all looked at him so admiringly. He strutted about in the sunlight, flapping his wings to show off his feathers, and now and then throwing back his head and crowing exuberantly, exulting, exultantly, sorry. His dream was forgotten. There was no fear in his heart. Okay, so I'll let you continue, finish that story, um, and then read Hiawatha's Childhood by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, um, and and don't forget to read work loyally as well at the beginning. Okay, and we will see you tomorrow for your vocab quiz 32, all right. Um, and well, you'll probably see me in the next, in, in